Hashim, 14 with Down syndrome, washes his hands. Mukhtar Ahmed, Hashim's father. We were forced to leave our country. Everything was burning. How could we stay there? Rajuma, 6. I remember my life in Myanmar. I used to go to school and play. Minara, 21. The clothes I had in Myanmar were beautiful, but I could only bring one dress with me. Manira Begum, Hashim's mother. Hashim can't walk properly. My other son had to carry him. Sometimes I carried him. On the way, I would sometimes fall, but I'd always get up again. My grandmother carried me all the way here. My parents died while we were running away. Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh. One in ten Rohingya refugee households includes a person living with a disability. When we arrived, there were no toilets. So we had to go to a nearby forest. Martin Worth, UNICEF Bangladesh. I think the major challenge in emergencies is the, is the speed. You need to make, uh, you need to provide services quickly. Maksuda Sultana, Care Bangladesh. When the influx began in 2017, it was an emergency situation. So we built the latrines with that in mind. I used to carry him to the toilet, but it was hard for him to use. John Miguele Okech, Care Bangladesh. Some of these environments, sometimes you find the terrain is not very friendly for persons with disability. When I go for walks, my legs hurt. Bashir Ahmed, a Rohingya refugee who is blind. In Myanmar, the ground was flat so I could walk easily, but here it's all uneven. I worry I'll trip over something or fall in the gutter. Apart from the actual access to the, to the, to the latrine itself, our standard design is, is using a squatting plate. Uh, persons with disability, for them to squat is very, very challenging. It gets very, very uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, it's hard for me to use those toilets. We came to a certain census that why, why can't we do a trial pilot of a latrine with certain add-ons? Wash here in Cox's Bazaar are working with uh, the supply section to pilot a more friendly design of latrines for, for people living with disabilities. It's more of a design where they can sit down rather than having to squat. Camp 16, we talked to all the persons with disabilities in Camp 16 using a set of questions to find out what features they needed, where their latrine should be located, what would make it more comfortable. Noor Aisha, 12. It's better because it's closer to our home. I'm able to sit on it and hold the handles. He can lean against it. It's quite comfortable for him now. There is also a railing on the path. It's easy for me to use. There is soap and water. I like it. This latrine is in a learning center, and it means they don't have to leave school to, to go and use the bathroom. Sometimes, Rajuma would get upset because the other kids would say, you only got this toilet because you're disabled. Through our hygiene promotion, interaction within the school, we really wanted to take that away from the minds of the children, that this latrine is for this child because the child is, has uh, challenges with movement and that sort of thing. No, it's for everyone. So everyone is equal. And that has made uh, the child opening up in schools and the teachers were able to tell us that. After we installed these latrines, the children were happy. I think these products should be included in the response to any future emergency. They should be built into the response. Now I can go to the toilet by myself. I feel better. 
It would be good if more of the trains like this were built for other people with disabilities. It would be nice if you could build a toilet like the one at school, but near my house. One day he'll grow up. If he's able to get around by himself and keep himself neat and tidy, I'll be very happy. If I can be around other people and be healthy, then I'll be happy. UNICEF continues to innovate assistive technology solutions to fulfill the rights of children with disabilities. UNICEF for every child.